Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitemout.com, Bitemoutlive.com, and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is, wow, January 28th, 2022. It's Friday, and uh, here in Gloucester, we're waiting for a little weather today. Uh, there's a fairly big storm coming our way, according to the uh, meteorologist that we follow, which is this fellow over here. If you don't use him, you might want to. His name is Ryan Hall Yall. And he's a very good weather guy, and uh, my son watches him all the time, so I thought, well, and I've been watching him, and the guy seems to be quite spot on. And this is what he has to say about our little corner of heaven here on Cape Ann uh, coming, coming towards us uh, in the next uh, 36 hours. Still talking about three to six. Uh, central Massachusetts, between Greenfield and Worcester, we're talking about 6 to 12. And then everywhere east of that has the opportunity to see 12 inches of snow all the way up to 2 feet. And there will once again be some places out here that see... And that's where we are, 3 feet. 3 feet of snow. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. 3 feet of snow is 100% possible. And I would not be surprised if we saw even more... We live right there. <laughs> right on the end of that little knobs sticking off of the end of the coast of Massachusetts here and uh, we're going to have big winds uh, 60 to 80 miles an hour they're predicting and I know something's going on because the seagulls have already come in um, when, you, when we start to get a storm coming our way the uh, nature knows first and our backyard is this morning is swarmed with um, probably three or four dozen robins are out there right now getting a last bite before the weather hits and uh, probably twice that many sparrows and chickadees and wrens are running around. And we have a pair of wrens that actually live on our, on our back porch. We have a big back porch that's glassed in in the winter. And uh, we have to leave the door open on one end for them because they have a little nest up in the eaves. And uh, they come and go. They've been here for years. Um, the, I don't know if it's the same one, maybe the offspring of previous birds. But anyway, we've... So we've sort of adopted them, I guess. <laughs> it's kind of silly, but, uh, you know. Any rate, the weather is supposed to get wild, and I'll try to videotape some of it, because it's supposed to be a pretty major storm, unless it nudges uh, east, but it uh, doesn't look like it's going to. It doesn't look like it's going to. It looks like a pretty nasty storm, and uh, we're going to have some uh, big storm surges, um, I suspect. So there we are. That's all the news around here for the week. And on uh, other things, um, it has been a busy week here. Uh, uh, we, we did another video uh, yesterday on an a interesting piece of uh, uh, Japanese uh, pottery that I bought, sell it on. Uh, and if you haven't seen it, it's, it's got a nice story behind it about who it came from and a little bit of the history. I uh, hope you take a look at that. And the other thing we did was... Um, We've added yet again to the menu. Last week, I think I mentioned that we added we added the PBD Museum in the diplomatic rooms of the State Department uh, because they have China trade uh, items in there, Chinese porcelain. And uh, uh, just uh, in the last 24 hours, we added the uh, let's see, with the Victorian Albert Museum here, and uh, their their setup now is good enough that we can go in and uh, create searches and pull them in by category so it's a pretty it's a pretty big addition to the museum lists uh japanese chinese uh by period and all that stuff for looking things up and uh, uh the victorian albert of course has a major major collection and uh, a very good resource uh we hadn't included it before because when we tried to uh, build in the links um something on their end was blocking uh, the uh, the pulling of those links in and uh, since since then they've made some changes and it's now possible so they're here all right and that's all the news that's fit to print there um, and what else is going on uh, let's see here oh yeah uh, a few things that sold and there were a few uh, this is for the global page users uh, we had a couple of sales up this week and there were some really good deals and things that passed that shouldn't have and uh, um, this was Taylor and Harris down in, in Gardena, California, had this armorial Nanking platter. Had a, a $350 starting bid, and it never got a bid. I have no idea why. It should have sold immediately for that price. This is a really fine piece of Nanking um, armorial. 
the whole bit should have brought six to eight hundred dollars pretty easy this is a platter it's 13 inches long and uh, uh you might want to somebody somebody out there if you collect uh, uh, uh armorial you might want to uh, this is a late 18th century early early 19th century plate you might want to contact them and see if you can buy it for the uh, starting bid because that would be a heck of a good deal if you're a collector that's a great deal taylor and harris in gardena california i don't know what happened but it happened and uh, some other results were this is from Juliet and Friends in uh, Waldwick, New Jersey. Uh, they had a number of lots that didn't sell because they're, I think they are way out over their skis on some of their reserves. Their estimates all seem fine, um, but on a number of their items, it seemed like, based on the bidding that I saw, that the items that didn't sell, you know, a few, number of their items, they had the reserve right up against the low estimate, and I think it discouraged people. Not the case in, with this. This nice little Kangxi Femi Ver dish uh, ended up selling for $275, um, uh, well below the low estimate. The, low, the estimate was a little bit on the heavy side, but it's a, this is a nice Kangxi plate. Uh, it's got a hairline in it, but nice pattern, uh, molded, uh, you know, uh, molded uh, body up around here in the Cavetto. There's the hairline. Uh, there's no chip. So uh, a little bath in hydrogen peroxide, commercial grade hydrogen peroxide for a week or so, will probably make that, that crack become much, much less evident, uh, if not invisible. Um, if you don't know that trick, you, you take, uh, you get yourself some commercial grade hydrogen peroxide, 35% hydrogen peroxide. The stuff they sell in the drugstores won't work. Uh, the typical, uh, you know, how, that you find on the shelf. You have to get it from a commercial uh, hydrogen peroxide provider. There's a couple of them in Florida that will ship you a gallon. Uh, they're about 35 bucks a gallon. You put the porcelain in there, um, provided there's no gilding or anything on it that you're too worried about, and uh, just leave it in there for about a week. And then at the end of a week, take it out, rinse it with fresh water, and then put it in a tub of fresh water for another week. And just let it soak and get out any residual uh, peroxide that might have been absorbed into the porcelain. And... Nine, 95 times out of 100, the cracks disappear. <laughs> it's pretty. It's a pretty neat trick. And I learned it from a, a great Chinese porcelain dealer who told me that years and years ago. And then I saw it again being done with English porcelain um, after that. So it's, it's, it's one of those old dealer, dealer things that they do to clean things up. All righty. Uh, that's that. All right. Now, what's going on? This was something that was over at Sotheby's. This was that... Um, uh, uh, this was the uh, the William K. DuPont sale, and he had some very interesting Chinese export porcelain that we talked about a few weeks ago. And one of them was this this single piece. Uh, this was a a, a terrine with a with a with a body is is built into the platter, and then there's a, a dome lid that goes on it. Had a really low estimate, I thought, two to three thousand dollars. A Chin Lung period, beautiful piece, and uh, it was it was decent size, 15 inches in uh, diameter, which is pretty big. And uh, there it is, beautiful piece of export porcelain, obviously Chin Lung period, uh, nice orange peel on it, finial doesn't look like it's been knocked off and put back, and uh, somebody picked it up for $4,788, that includes the buyer's premium. I think that was a wonderful buy, because I think that's a, a pretty rare bird. And the other thing that was rare was this punch bowl. If you remember, we talked about this at some length because it's an interesting subject matter, European subject matter on an export bowl of a procession heading towards a church. If you remember this, this was I thought this was just a wonderful rare bowl. Uh, and if, if, if you're going to buy you know, a really rare piece of export porcelain, this is the piece you might want to consider this year. And uh, it was estimated, I thought, reasonably at ten to 15000 I thought that was completely reasonable. It ended up selling for fifty thousand, um, but not surprised. Unbelievably rare uh, pattern with this hen in the center, with other animals, and uh, beautifully decorated and a superb example. So there you go. But um, um, like I said, you know, if you're going to buy one, there's the armorial crest on that side. If you're going to buy a punch ball, buy a great punch ball. That's a great punch ball. All right. And the other thing that was sort of a bargain was this was the Pierre Durand sale. This was the uh, uh, Khalil Risk's uh, uh, partner, an old friend. He was an art collector. Uh, he, he died uh, uh, just about a year ago. And uh, uh, he was involved with the founding of the Chinese Porcelain Company in New York, which is still there. But when he and, he, he and um, uh, Khalil Risk were running it, 
it was quite really quite spectacular. Now it's sort of just more of a dealer, a regular dealer's shop. But when they ran it, uh, there was they had they had a lot of financial backing between the two of them, and um, they had one heck of an interesting operation. This was something that uh, Pierre Durand had in his house: a set of twelve Chinese uh, uh, biscuit glazed sweet meat dishes. All twelve of them sold for just two thousand dollars, and I think that was a good buy. Uh, that's less than that's like one hundred and sixty bucks a piece for a Kangxi. Uh, a sweet meat set uh, for each piece. I think that's very reasonable, um, and they all appeared to be in nice condition. The chances are he got them from. He obviously got them when when he was working with the Chinese porcelain company, I suspect, and they only bought pieces that were perfect typically. So that was, I think, that was two thousand dollars for that was a very very reasonable buy, especially to the Kangxi collector that's uh, maybe used to paying higher prices elsewhere. And the other thing that was fabulous was this mirror, which I do remember was at the Chinese Porcelain Company, and, and uh, Pierre obviously uh, decided to keep it, or he bought it. It had a hundred dollars to $200,000 estimate. <laughs> it blew that away and went for $600,000. Now, something interesting is happening, is that, is that I noticed there were some other sales um, in, in New York this week. The American Americana sales happened. And um, typically, you know, for the last 15 to 20 years, Americana has been uh, very weak, very, very weak. They, they sort of uh, have, le have a lot less focus on it. The prices, are, you know, when they were getting, you know, three, four, five, six, ten million for American furniture, those days went away. And there seems to be some life coming back into the old girl yet, as they say. And um, this week, the Americana sales didn't have those pri kinds of prices that we saw during the peak in the mid-90s. But uh, prices, uh, there was a piece, of, uh, 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 not a Newport block front desk, but another piece of furniture that brought over a million dollars in American chess by a known cabinet maker. And uh, across the board, Americana seems to be picking up, which means the decorative market is picking up, which may be what drove this thing to reach $600,000. Uh, because this is something that you, you're now competing with wealthy interior designers working on big houses that somebody wants something really spectacular and there's a lot of money floating around right now and um, and, and the Chinese collector um, but once you get the decorate decorators involved with wealthy clients wanting to finish a house to make a you know make spectacular rooms you can get these prices, and this may be a, something interesting that's coming along in the market. There may be new components coming into the Asian art market um, along the decorative line, and this thing, and I, we've seen it in some furniture that uh, 18th, 19th century furniture that's very good quality from China, but in the past haven't historically done that well. Suddenly, we've seen in the last couple of years those pieces of furniture, the best pieces are bringing serious money, and I'm not convinced they're going to collectors of Chinese art. I think they're going to people looking to design and decorate and enhance the interiors of a lot of these McMansions that have been sold over the last uh, uh, 10 years after the recovery from the 2008 crash. And uh, there's a lot there's a lot of them around here that have been built. And um, um, I think they're all getting sick of Pier 1. So the, 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 I think you're going to see an increase in um, antiques. Um, and I've seen it with younger people too. This is an interesting, another interesting trend. I don't mean to go on. But uh, um, uh, one of my sons is sort of tied into this thing, and actually two of my sons are in, in a fairly active way, and, and one of my sons works uh, for me, uh, two of our sons work for us, but one of them in particular has been with me for 15 years. And the younger guys in my family are seeing um, interest among people in their 20s that are making good money, people that are doing well, people in their 20s and 30s, on, on these these social media things are looking to buy authentic stuff they're looking to buy good quality stuff they're looking to buy you know very good contemporary art they're looking to buy very good decorative art they're looking to buy um, uh, really great watches watches is of course a huge thing right now but you know you know you know expensive Rolexes POJ and those kinds of things but there seems to be a, a wave coming in of, of people that when they get some money they're putting it into nice things so we'll we'll see if that continues but this this sort of made me think that all right the other thing that did very well was this very large pair of femi ver lions this was in the duran sale also these were 17 inches tall these were very very big and they had a fairly modest estimate 10 to 15 thousand they ended up selling for 40 thousand but these are beautiful um absolutely wonderful light nice light colors strong color 
and um, uh, very attractive, very, very attractive. And um, lastly was this, I thought this was a pretty good buy. If you're, if you're a glass collector, if you collect Chinese glass, this is a late 18th, maybe early 19th century, but the form is, was, is, is generally uh, connected to 18th century uh, Chinese Beijing glass or Peking glass as it used to be called. It had a $46,000 estimate, and I'm selling for 2,500. And that's a pretty good buy for real gar glass. Um, um, and this had a nice color, nice ruby red color to it with gentle striations around the body. Here you can see them, the lines, and some more at the top. And uh, I thought that was a, a rather choice piece, and it went for just $2,500. So um, th there are some opportunities. Like I said, you know, if, you, if you're using the global pages, you know, don't be afraid to register at uh, Sotheby's or Christie's or Bonham's, the big auction houses, if you're using the pages. And leave a bid. Leave a bid. They're happy to do business with you. And um, um, a lot of you are in and out of New York City. You have friends that are in the New York area. If you don't want to get involved with their shipping, you can have somebody pick it up for you uh, and, and have it released to them and, uh, you know, find a way to get it. Because in the end, it all includes the buyer's premiums and all that stuff. So you have to calculate that in, but everybody calculates that in. And as you can see here, you, you can get some, you, there are some things that go through there that are, are, are pretty, pretty reasonable. Um, uh, if this piece was on uh, eBay, I wouldn't be surprised if it brought two or $3,000 or maybe more. All right, but it, it was a nice one. Uh, very attractive, six inches tall, beautiful color. There you are. All right, now let's mosey on over to uh, see what happened over on eBay last week. Uh, there were some pretty good price results from what I remember. We get the page to load. There we go. Uh, there was one seller. He had a couple of nice transitional period vases, uh, jars. We had two. In, we had a couple of inquiries from people that were looking at these. A number of actually between the between the two. I think we probably had four or five inquiries through the identification assistance service on these. Um, I wanted to know what we thought. We thought they were fine, um, and thought they'd bring you know eight hundred to a thousand, eight hundred to twelve hundred dollars. And uh, this one ended up doing just fine. It ended up bringing one thousand ninety eight dollars. There you go. This was a sweet one. And the same seller had um, this one up as well. A little brighter color, obviously, stronger cobalt in it. It had a some sort of repair around the rim of the mouth, they said. But I couldn't tell where it was. So I, I told the people, that, a couple of people, three people asked about this, as I recall. And I said, get in touch with them and find out what the restoration is on this rim. Is it just a repaired chip or is it, is it something more significant? At any rate, uh, I, don't, I never heard back what it was, but it ended up selling for $1,240, which is about right. You know, it's getting up there, but the color is good, size was nice, and uh, the lid obviously was later. That's obviously a 20th century lid, but, but the pot itself was, 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 had nice color, had a little bit of wear, but it's transitional, and transitional wares have become um, very uh, suddenly in the last f four or five years, very popular. I think owing a large part to the, the to the publicity around the Butler collection and how it got broken up and how the, the, the family split it. Uh, one daughter, I don't know if you know the story, but the Butler collection was what, what there's a YouTube video about it with Mr. Butler himself narrating before he went on to his reward. And um, uh, it was inherited by his two daughters and one of them wanted to keep, he had, Mr. Butler had built a, a little museum for his collection, which was a great collection. He wrote, there were a number of books written on it. Um, and he was one of the first to really do any scholarship and to stimulate interest in transitional porcelain. Prior to that, uh, half the dealers didn't even know what it was. People had trouble identifying it. It was often misidentified as Kangxi, misidentified as Ming, all kinds of things. And he wrote this book, he did the research, and now transitional wares have become popular. And now they're reproducing fakes of transitional vases. I, I've seen a lot of sleeve vases and uh, the bottle vases and all kinds of things just in the last few years have started to pop into the market. And uh, so you want to keep that in mind. But the real ones do just fine. And uh, they weren't bringing anything years ago. You could pick them up very inexpensive. I remember you could buy a good double gourd transitional vase for, um, oh, if it was in an antique shop in New England, you'd buy it for 350 bucks. They'd label it Canton. It was pretty good, $200 back in the day. Today, they're much, much more. <laughs> You know, eight, nine, ten thousand. But anyway, and then there was this: the reverse painting on glass. And I thought this was quite nice. It had it supposedly had some sort of a break down the side. I couldn't see where it was. It might have just been some peeling in the glass or something. At any rate, this is a 19th century one. Somebody picked this up for two hundred and fifty-five dollars. That was a bargain. 
that was a bargain of the week. <laughs> uh, really was. That was a heck of a good deal. So whoever got it, I hope it's one of you. Great, uh, because it, this this was, uh, in my opinion, um, a, about one fifth of what it was worth. They got it way under the money. And then this, this very nice uh, 19th century uh, dragon rug sold. Pretty good size. I think it was about seven feet long, um, you know, five feet in diameter, something like that, in fairly good condition. It had a couple of couple of wear spots in it here and here, uh, which is pretty typical of these, but you can tell by the weave that it's a, a 19th century rug. Uh, it's a nice old one. Ended up selling for $1,736. All right, but it was graphically very attractive. It was done in the early Qing style. And um, overall, to get those little areas over in here where, where, the, where, where you're seeing low spots, to get those repiled isn't that big a deal, really, because th there's no pattern, really, to weave through. It's just a color. They just have to add the color, but sew, sew those colors back in. And um, you've got a heck of a nice rug on your hands. All right. Uh, I'm kind of surprised the seller didn't do that before they sold it because it's not a big deal to get done. But anyway, and then this, this was the, that nice little Japanese ink drawn book. Uh, there were a couple of them from this seller and they, they, they misadvertised them as Chinese. I don't know why. Um, well, well, I know why they didn't, they, they didn't understand it. But anyway, it's Woolworths down on, on, in Rhode Island. They're, they're good dealers. They, I, knowing what I know about them, these came out of an estate somewhere in the, in the in the New England area here, and uh, these were terrific. These were really nice drawings, nice pen and ink drawings, very personally done, uh, in, all inscribed pages of them. They had two of these books, and um, um, uh, this sold for just $155. I thought that was a wonderful buy uh, for very nice uh, Japanese watercolors, Meiji period, but nicely done. And uh, then over to this, uh, the uh, dragon um, uh, seat cover, uh, a, a good one. We've seen these before, and I went and checked because it looked a lot like one that I'd seen uh, that had been on here a while ago, but it's not the same one, um, um, and it's not from the same seller. But this is a nice one also, and it brought about the same price, $2,550. And uh, as we're seeing, um, silk prices are remaining very, very strong. One thing I wanted to mention about silk silk, they are reproducing fake robes. You, you wouldn't think they would, but bless them, they are. And um, I saw one that was sold, I think it was Eden or Lauren Gallery, or somebody had one that was a copy of, those, of the pearl worked robes that they did where they wove white natural pearls into the into the into the pattern to make the scales of the dragon which they actually did in the 18th century but the one that they had was a complete fake complete with a receipt from a paris uh, clothing store where they said the thing was bought originally in 1861 or, or, or something i forget what it was but it was from this uh uh, it was a famous woman's lingerie store in Paris. So it was near the Opera House. Anyway, it's not there anymore, but it was uh, It was there from the mid-1800s right through, uh, I, I think, up to the beginning of World War II. Um, anyway, it was a famous, famous, big, big department store like Harrods. But they, they sold women's lingerie and women's nylons and umbrellas and things like that. And the, they, they came up with a receipt that just says robe. Well, this place specialized in women's bathrobes. Um, it was one of their big products. And uh, at any rate, the, they, 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 they pitched it as, as having been bought there. It was just ridiculous. But at any rate, it sold for 50, that fake sold for $50,000. And if you look at it, you know it's not right because the colors are wrong. But, um, and so it goes. And so it goes. Uh, so keep be very careful with dragon robes, especially ones that have unusual coloring. Uh, always check the colors. Always check the colors when you look at robes. Do the colors make sense? Is there is there wear on the collar and the back here? Um, uh, there are little things to look for on silks that will always be there. Um, so be careful. All right. I mean, occasionally you'll see one that's been trunked and uh, not not out, but 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 the, but the colors are right. Uh, the copies out there, the colors are either off, they're a bit garish, too bright, there's orange, bright orange, things like that, you know right away, don't touch it. If it has bright pink in it, it's not old, uh, that kind of thing. But just just uh, uh, beware that they are making pretty good copies of um, dragon ropes, and uh, they're turning up all over live auctioneers. It's amazing. 
Okay, now moseying along to this, the uh, the late 18th, early 19th century elephant. It's a nice one, but it, 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 he had it listed as 18th century. I'm not convinced, but it, it, it doesn't matter. It's a very nice elephant. It's done with these swirly patterns that they did elephants in. And, um, um, but the enamels and decoration to me look a little bit later, look like more like Chai Jing period, but uh, nicely done, nicely done little elephant with a vase on his back and uh, ended up selling for $1,499. This was Megalari had this over in the UK. Uh, he gets nice things, and that was a nice thing. And uh, over here to this, the two uh, Chinese Amari uh, uh, dinner plates, uh, nice color, matching pair, uh, nice quality. They look to be in, 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 uh, in, in good condition. And they ended up selling for about 120 bucks a piece, 130, $237 for both of them, which I think is a great buy because you can hang them on a wall. They look nice. Um, you know, uh, people, people get, should, should hang plates. You know, if you have nice looking, very decorative plates, treat them like paintings, put them on a wall, um, uh, you know, you know, because not everybody has lots of display cabinets to put things in. You just, you have so many and uh, that's it, you know. Um, and you don't want to put them on stands where there's traffic because somebody will knock them over and break them. All right, and then over to this, this really nice late 18th or early 19th century uh, China trade uh, uh, tankard or, or, or pitcher, rather. It's missing its lid. It had a lid at one point, obviously, here that would have gone up and had a little, you know, a little berry finial or something on top of it. But the decoration of this was really nice, rather atypical. And uh, I like the, uh, uh, the, the, the way they ran this uh, swag all the way around it to encircle it. And it had a very nice um, double strap handle that were uh, well done, very well done handles. Nice, nicely spread out. Uh, and of course, uh, the underglazed blue peacock feather going up the, up the, up the handle itself. Very typical. And uh, this ended up selling, I think, pretty reasonably, $415. Uh, this was a nice, elegant piece of porcelain and not a small piece of porcelain this thing is i think they're about 12 inches tall or something or eight nine inches tall eight eight and a half nine inches tall yeah nice looking piece of porcelain um and somebody bought it i think reasonably all right and then moseying on over here to the nonya straits uh pieces still have interest these are these were uh, early 20th century examples uh but nicely done and the, the stamps, the rubber stamping of the marks are off by a little bit, but the colors were pretty good and uh, with shaped rims and so forth. And uh, somebody bought them for uh, $381 for all three, which is, if you follow Nonya Straits and, and uh, Peranican Wares, uh, you know that that's a pretty reasonable price. And then over here to this, the little Ming square uh, sauce dish uh, was on there. I like this, I like the border, this sort of swirl, scrolling clouds around the outside. And then I, I, I like the landscape that was depicted on the inside with the ocean and the clouds and the men in the boats and all that. And uh, it went for $503, which is fine. That's a, a perfectly fine number. And uh, I, I like that. This was from a, um, a seller named Asian Art 1126. There's a lot of sellers out there with the name Asian Art and then some sort of number. So um, it's, they're a little hard to keep track of. This is a guy over in London selling this. Fairly new eBay sell. He's only got 59 feedbacks. And then this, my bamboo guy. Um, uh, I kind of wish I bought this, but at any rate, uh, this, this was a charming little a little carving. It's a good patina. This is one of those personal things that you just like to own. It's got a lot of charm. Um, somebody, you could almost picture the guy working on it, detailing it out. Beautiful little thing with good color and no wear, no breaks, nothing to complain about, just a good, pure object. And uh, somebody, somebody, I think, got it quite reasonably, $444. I think that was absolutely fine. And this was, um, uh, this was a seller who's named Dan Li, Dan, Den Li Jia. Den Li Jia, Den, Den Li Jia, I don't know. At any rate, they're in the UK, and uh, that was a nice thing. I liked that. I liked the color of it. I liked the shape of it. Liked his face, and uh, $444 for a nice uh, early 19th century bamboo carving, I think is pretty reasonable. I don't think he dated it. He should have. Oh, there it is, 1850-1899. I think it's actually older than that, but that's just my, my thoughts on it because of the color and the, the, way, the, the style of it. 
any rate. And then this, this was something Joni's had up in Canada. They had a whole bunch, they had an auction of other things, but they had a bunch of these terrific um, uh, mission photos from the 1920s. And Chinese photography, if it's done well, Chinese photography is highly collectible. I've said it before in other videos, if, you, if you've seen a number of them, you've heard me mention them before. Uh, Chinese photography is one of these growing areas of interest really heavy growing areas of interest. I've had collections of Chinese photographers by members of the Hong Kong Photo Club and all that. And there is a market for that stuff. Wow. And um, always interesting. And these were just mission commercial stamped um, uh, photos depicting, you know, life and that kind of thing. These were not done by a famous artist that they, um, 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 uh, you know, for, for a gallery. These, these were done to, um, uh, uh, to go to the photo bureau to Shanghai to be shared. These are silver gelatin prints. They were sort of promotional things. Anyway, nicely done. Nice, charming photograph. A very charming photograph of kids resting on a pig. <laughs> really cute. And uh, they're all tired. And uh, ended up selling for $521. And uh, uh, they had a number of these in, on there. And I don't know um, what the other ones brought. I didn't go and look. But, but always keep your eye out for old Chinese photographs that are large format. Uh, so this is uh, silver gelatin prints and that kind of thing, because uh, they're they're very 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 collectible, and often they're signed on the back and who did them and when and all that. All right, and then over here to this, this was that nice uh, uh, Yongshan um, gilt and Famille rose uh, punch ball, not a big ball. I think this was about 10 inches in diameter or something like that, uh, just about 10 inches in diameter. Ended up selling for 549 dollars, but had really nice color. Really nice color. The gilding was in good shape. Uh, not not a lot to complain about with this. Nice overglazed blue enamels, and so forth. A little a little glaze pole there on along the rim. You can see it in the picture. But five hundred forty nine dollars for a good pure bowl. Um, good price. That was a that was a that was a good buy for someone. And then the Kangxi jar with the little lid with the Fu lion on it, standing on a on a box next to a scroll. I liked him. He was awfully cute. And uh, nice, deep, dark cobalt, really rich cobalt blue, really, really rich. Here's a picture of the bottom of it, which it looked like. And this nice lid, I like these lids. They made these in the 19th century for jars. And uh, I, I, I've seen many of them over the years. And they're always well done. They look good on jars. They don't take your eye, they don't distract from the, from the jar. They just sit there very nicely and complement it. Uh, here's a picture of the, of the top of it. And here's the, some details. But anyway, this was a nice piece of Kenshi ware and uh, ended up selling for uh, $2,300. And this was not an enormous jar either. I suspect it was probably six inches, six, a little under six inches in, di in height. The, this particular form typically is not a big jar. I always think of these as being sort of under seven inches, under six inches in that shape. They, I mean, occasionally they are, but, but usually if they're bigger, they're, they're a bit more rounded out. Um, what I've seen, anyway, but this this is a popular size, and uh, then over to this, the little Tongshi marked uh, uh, enameled plate. Uh, I thought this was pretty good. Um, so did a lot of people, apparently. Uh, it's a, uh, not a plate, a brush washer rather. Here it is. He has it down as an incense burner. It's really not an incense burner. It's a brush washer, but close enough. And uh, there's bats flying around the inside of it. There are three bats, auspicious. And here's a you know a, a wheel of uh, Dharma or a Buddha Buddha wheel on the outside, and uh, there's the mark, and it all looks fine. It all looks to be about right in that period, and ended up selling for thirteen hundred and forty-four dollars, which I, I think is fine. I think that that was a, a it's a nice thing, it's a nice thing, um, you know, from the, from the sort of the just after the middle nineteenth uh, century. All right, and then what's coming up? Uh, there's a few things coming up this week. There's a lot of things. I haven't gone through them all yet. I, 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 I've been accumulating them during the week, but I haven't gone back to refresh my memory on all of them. But there's, there's a lot of material coming up. We're seeing, uh, we're getting back to uh, more active levels. Uh, I, I've, I've been saying it for a couple of weeks, but this, this week also there's a, there's a bounty of stuff that will be on the uh, Bitamount newsletter page where, where all this stuff is. Um, over, over, you know, well, let's see, did I lose the page? No, there it is. Uh, this is the page. All of you, a lot of you know where it is. It's over on the bitamount.com site. And this is all stuff that we curate onto the site that we handpick. Uh, we do the same with the global member pages. Somebody asked me about that. 
um, uh, because something happened. Uh, oh, the, the Gallery Zach sale. We, we had some of the Gallery Zach stuff in the, on the uh, global member pages. And we got a lot of inquiries about stuff that we didn't include in the global member pages. And the reason they weren't on the global pages is because we didn't trust the stuff. All right. And it's not that Zach is dishonest. I think they're just they're just a little bit inept and um, at things at times or they don't try that hard. I don't know. But at any rate, if it's not on the global pages, it's probably not on there for a reason. Um, uh, because we've had a lot of people who use the global pages will go to an auction and they'll they'll look for things other than what we we've we've suggested and then they'll write and say gee you know this is that same auction should we should we buy it and i'm going no 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 you shouldn't no they sell real things and they sell copies and this is sort of what you see in 80 90 percent of the auctions around today you'll see the do asian stuff you'll see real stuff you'll see a lot of copies mixed in and they and, and it's amazing to me that most of the auction houses have no shame in that um, they know they're selling fakes, and they claim that they're in the antique business. They know they're selling fake Chinese porcelain. They know they're selling fake jades, but they don't care. That's really what it amounts to. They just don't care. They have to fill up the sale with something, and if they can throw a fake in there, they're there, the hall's rented, or they've, they've set aside the time, they've done the promotion, they've done the photography, and, you know, so take in some copies, you know, Make you know one, one guy said to me once we make our apologies on Monday after they sell fakes to people they go oh well gee we didn't know yeah they knew but they don't believe them they know and um, so we only include on the global pages and on the on the newsletter pages things that we've looked at pretty carefully and say okay this is okay we think this is all right uh, and uh, just keep that in mind if you're using the global pages um, if it's not on the page it's not a probably it's probably not on the page for a reason. So like on the live auctioneer stuff or the or the bid square stuff, um, be, because it's we don't think it's any good. Is why is why. All right. Uh, now over to this. This is a, a nice silk that's coming up. Um, uh, closes in a couple of days. Uh, closes in ten days. This oh this is the one that just went up. Um, it's a nice it's a nice looking panel. Good long one. Uh, nice weave to it. And uh, that that's that's up there right now. And then this this is a really interesting plate. I, I saw this yesterday for the first time. I don't know where it's been all week. I, oh, it's got one bid, so it probably didn't turn up on any any search radar anywhere. There's anything that's had anybody's interest. But this is a very nicely done uh, plate, probably Yong Chen period, uh, but but nicely done with the basket in the middle, good strong enamels, uh, but uh, really pretty, pretty pretty plate, and an unusual pattern. It's got one bid of 175 uh, pounds or 234 dollars. Uh, it should do better than that. It should bring three or four hundred bucks. That's a pretty good looking dish. Um, if you're a familiar rose collector, check that one out because the, this border is really unusual, very unusual. It, it runs up over the cavetto, but then it has a big blank space between it and the outer rim, which which frames it very very nicely. It's a very successful uh, 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 rendition. And uh, then this, this, this turned up the other day, and I like this. This is uh, enamel on, on uh, I don't know if it's on, on silver or what it's on. The guy doesn't really say. But uh, beautiful Chinese enamel. Really, really nice with a base, uh, but beautiful colors. And uh, this is a 19th century thing. Uh, I like it a lot. Is that on pewter or what is that? It's on, it's on some sort of metal. And, uh, but the enameling is quite good. It's got an old uh, collection uh, number on the bottom. That's how they used to write them in the 19th century, in the early 20th century. But this is good work, really, really good work. And uh, it's, it's up to just $99, which seems awfully cheap, seems awfully low. Um, okay, he says it's silver cloisonne. Okay, there you go. It's, it's, oh, it's, it's uh, just start limited. Yeah, well, uh, 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 or, JG Arts Limited. Um, this is a nice thing. I didn't even I didn't know he was the seller. It's good things. Um, it's being sold in London. Closes in three days. Closes on Monday. If you like enamels, you like cloisonne, you want to look at this. This is a nice thing. And uh, and then um, uh, Steve, a guy I know in New Hampshire, has this up. Uh, he didn't call to tell me. I, I happened to see it. Uh, but uh, a nice 19th century bonds, possibly late 18th century. Good, you know, good, good work on it. Nice little, you know, um, arrow handles on the side and all that, just rope handles. 
And uh, here's a picture of the bottom. It's got some mark scratched into it. But it's an old pot. This isn't something new. Um, and uh, it's just up to $50. It closes on Monday. Uh, but it should do better than that. It's pretty good size, as I recall. It's like 10 inches tall or something. Uh, 11 inches, 11 and 3 quarter inches tall. 11 and 7 eighths. So uh, there it is. So it's nice size. Looks good. Make a spectacular table lamp if you have arts and crafts furniture. Okay, and now on to the 18th century and, uh, uh, enamel Chinlung uh, dish, square dish. Uh, this is, these are typically fairly small. This one's probably three or four inches in diameter, something like that. Uh, four inches, uh, four inches in diameter, four inches, you know, in diameter and width and length and all that. But nice enameling, nice enameling, and and surprisingly, it looks to be in quite good shape on the front. And uh, the back is in good shape, so there you go. You're all set. Uh, it's up to just a hundred bucks. I ought to bring two or three hundred. Uh, Good-looking piece of Beijing enamel. That'll be in the newsletter page this week. And then um, a super shrink, uh, formerly of Massachusetts, now down in South North Carolina or South North Carolina. There they are. Um, have this very nice uh, tea set up um, by Zi Wu. It made around 1890. And uh, super shrink is a really good silver dealer. Uh, if you like Chinese silver, or you like silver in general, uh, he gets really, I think it's a guy and his wife, they get really, really good things. And um, uh, they have a good eye for silver, they, they know a lot about it, and I, I, I think are quite reputable, quite, very reputable from what I've seen and heard. So uh, this is a nice thing, 11 bids, it's up to $1,000, ought to bring 2500 to $3,500. But it's got seven days to go. But if you're looking for a good, a good bit of Chinese silver, you might want to look at this. The decoration on it is quite nice. They're very elegant with bamboo handles and so forth. So check those out. All right. And that's about it for the week. Um, if you uh, 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 haven't subscribed yet here, please do subscribe to us here on YouTube. We, we like seeing uh, people join up and leave comments. Leave comments uh, below. A lot of you do. I, like to, I always read them. I don't always comment back. Uh, uh, because, uh, just because I, I'm doing a lot of other things, but I always read the comments and I very much enjoy hearing what you all have to say. And uh, we do try to, you know, we do take the comments, by the way, and do curtail, you know, uh, uh, sort of cr create things that, you know, if somebody asks for something, we try to uh, um, accommodate them. Somebody said a few weeks ago they didn't like to see my picture in the upper right hand corner because it was blocking some of the information on the pages when we were discussing them. So I said, fine. So we, we moved it down to the lower right again. And um, that's fine. But make suggestions. We're happy to hear from you. you if, if you uh, have, don't use the newsletter page to help you buy, um, you might want to try it. It might save you some headaches and hassles. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Have a great weekend. We will try to videotape some of the storm um, that's coming in. It's going to be exciting. Um, we're, you know, we're in good shape as far as stuff around the house. We have, we can, we can light a fire. We can do all kinds of stuff here to stay warm. So we're not worried about that because we are supposed to lose our power probably tomorrow. Um, they're already telling us that uh, because we get 60 plus mile an hour winds with snow on the power lines here on the water. Um, doesn't take much to knock one of them out and then you're, we're in the dark for a day or two. <laughs> okay. All right, and that's the way it goes. All right, have a great weekend, and uh, see you all next week. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.